Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've been doing well. Today's video is going to be about my favorite and best purchases of 2023. I just went through my list of all my luxury purchases of this year and I picked out my absolute favorites. I know it's still early December. I did do a little bit of Black Friday shopping, but I actually ended up returning those big purchases. So I feel like I've pretty much done my luxury shopping for the year. Of course, I know that there is still some time and maybe something comes along, but I think that if something does come along, between now and December 31st, I would probably fold it into the purchases for next year. But I will say this, just in case there is a purchase that comes up between now and the end of the year, uh, if it becomes part of my favorite or best of list, I'm going to put it in for 2024. So I went through everything I bought so far and here are the items that I absolutely love. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go by brand. So I'm going to start with Chanel and as many of you, I have also kind of fallen away from Chanel in the past couple of years. So price increases plus the quality issues just have just been too much for me to ignore and I'm getting I'm just getting priced out of Chanel basically that being said there are a few Chanel items that I did buy this year that I absolutely love and this is the key holder and this I got I think this was I'm pretty sure this was actually my first purchase of last year so I will link to this video in case you missed it but look at how gorgeous that is I'm gonna try to angle it to the light so you can see just how buttery and shiny that lambskin is it still looks really great so this piece is coming up on one year old I have used it pretty much every single day and I think it looks amazing and I was a little bit scared about the lambskin especially with an SLG generally with SLGs I just feel like they tend to show their wear and tear a little bit more just because they're small items that you are kind of handling pretty much on a regular basis you know I think with bags they even though they're bigger they're just not going to get as bumped around as much and these are kind of getting bumped around in your inside your bags and you're handling them and you're opening them and there's just a lot happening with all SLG so I have to say I was a little concerned about the lambskin in particular but it looks great there's no scratches nowhere and I'm just looking over it again now I would say there's there's probably very light scratches on the hardware but that's inevitable with any Chanel SLG of this piece if any of you have something like this you know that that is just inevitable and the inside looks very good there is definitely some wear here where the keys hit the leather but I definitely knew that was going to happen and that is also pretty inevitable but here are my keys so I have my four house keys for my apartment and my front door. And then I have a little tile tracker here to make sure that I know where this is at all times. And then here I do have a little loyalty card right there. And then it does have the back pocket. There's really nothing in the back pocket right now, but sometimes when I'm running out the door and I only just wanna carry my ID and one credit card, I will stick it in the back pocket and then I'll take my phone and then I'm good to go. So here it is again, the Chanel key holder, and this is definitely one of my favorite purchases for 2023. And this is also the first item that I purchased earlier this year. Next for Chanel, I have this beautiful blue card holder and I love this so much. I feel like I have been on the hunt for this forever. And every time I walked in this particular SLG, especially, so I wanted this card holder. I especially wanted the one with the back pocket. And I didn't want the one with the zipper on top or I don't know. There's a lot of variations of Chanel card holders, but this is the one that I really, really wanted. And I'm so happy when I finally got my hands on this and it is such a beautiful light blue color. Blue is definitely my favorite color. And I really wanted something in kind of like a lighter blue. I, it's not really a Tiffany blue, but it's just a really nice light blue. And it does have this main compartment here, as well as a front pocket right here for your ID or anything that you really need easy access to, as well as this amazing back pockets. So just comparing these two side by side, so you guys can take a look at these in a little bit more detail. The third and final Chanel item that I wanted to add on my favorites list this year is a pair of sunglasses, and I picked these up in Singapore. And these, I don't really know the exact name of these, but these have Chanel written on the top right here in beige. And I absolutely love these. I don't have a lot of rectangle sunglasses that are a little bit on the smaller side. And I know that's like pretty trendy right now, but I still wanted something that had a classic silhouette. This kind of reminds me of the Wayfarer look. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the Ray-Bans Wayfarers from, I think I had a pair in like 2007 maybe. It kind of gives me that silhouette, which I really, really like. A lot of my sunglasses are either round or they're kind of oversized. And this is just a really nice 
rectangular style sunglasses. So I purchased these in Singapore in August of this year. Next, I'm gonna go with Louis Vuitton and these are the Truce pouches. So this is the 23 size and this is the 28 size. And I purchased these probably at the end of January or February of this year. I know because I had these for my trip to Europe, which was in March. So it definitely was in the early part of the year. And I purchased these from Farfetch and I am obsessed with these. I think these are the best travel pouches. I think they're so hard wearing. I, they can fit a ton. So one will fit most of my toiletries and then this one will fit like pretty much all my makeup. And these are great, especially for longer trips. For weekend trips, I probably wouldn't bother with something of this size. I would probably downsize and go much, much smaller. But for, you know, two week trips, I do need to carry like my toiletries. I want to carry a lot more makeup. I want to have options. And so, both of these have been amazing for my longer trips. Couldn't recommend this more. I think that these are in amazing condition too. I think these are both from the 90s. And a lot of you guys already know Farfetch does pre-loved. And you can see the, you can't see the store, but you can see where the store is located. And both of these are from Japan. And I love shopping secondhand from Japan. Actually, I think one of these was from Amori Vintage, which I've been to many times before because they sent me a little business card when they sent this. And yeah, I just love shopping secondhand from Japan. So it just gave me additional trust knowing that these items were coming from Japan, even though I was purchasing from Farfetch. And yeah, that's about it. Don't really have anything else to say except that I absolutely love these. Highly recommend these if you are looking for a good travel toiletry pouch. Next, I have this necklace, which you guys will see from my Japan uh, last reveal video. And I absolutely love this. This is the vintage VCA Alhambra necklace in the rose gold and again this is the vintage size not the sweet size and i absolutely love this i think it looks so good and it's definitely a little bit bigger than the sweet size at first i was kind of worried that it was going to be a little bit too big just because i was really used to the sweet size and i was really used to that kind of dainty look but i don't think it looks that big at all and one of my theories for this is because that it is rose gold it does blend in with my skin tone a little bit more so you know for example if i were to wear white gold or yellow gold it might it might pop a little bit more but this one i just feel like is definitely fine jewelry but a little bit more subtle just because of the color and i just absolutely love this so much i love matching it with my six motif bracelet and yeah everything about this necklace has just been pure love so very very happy about this addition to my collection and the other favorite is this vintage fendi shoulder bag from japan absolutely love this i feel like this is the perfect everyday size this bag i think is going to be so versatile you can dress it up you can dress it down it'll look good with jeans it'll look good if you want to wear a dress or something a little bit nicer it can fit my full-size wallet and mini pochette like it just really can deceptively do it all i love this bag i think this is a wonderful find i have been wanting to add a fendi to my collection for the longest longest time and i finally found the perfect one and i couldn't be happier about it okay so I have one last bag to show you guys on this list and I am sure you all know what it is. If you've been watching my channel for the last few months, you know that this is the year that I got a Birkin 25 and here it is. She is so beautiful. This is my first ever Birkin bag. I picked her up in Singapore secondhand. The secondhand market in Singapore for Hermes especially is just out of this world. Like it, it is basically like Hermes handbag heaven. You can go to so many different stores. They're all in amazing condition. A lot of them are brand new. This one was definitely pre-owned, but honestly, she looks pretty much brand new to me. I've worn her as much as I can this year for, you know, dinners and I've taken her traveling. And I just have to say that this is such a beautiful bag. And I'm not actually sure if I should include the Twillies as part of this list as well, but maybe I should. I did pick these Twillies up in San Francisco after I returned from Singapore just to protect the handles. And I really love this kind of like pink and light blue colorway. Pink and light blue are colors that I tend to wear the most. And this particular Twilly does have a little bit of darker blue here. It's pretty subtle, but I feel like that kind of matches the dark blue here. I wanted to get these Twillies just to protect the handles because the handles on the, on the Birkin 25, which I really think is my only gripe about this bag, are pretty tiny. Like you do need to kind of just like make sure that your hands fit and it's going to touch the handle of the bag like no matter what you do. Maybe if you have like way smaller hands and smaller wrists than I do, then you'd be fine. But right now I'm not wearing any jewelry, but generally I do wear bracelets. I just didn't want my rings and bracelets to keep rubbing up on the handles just 
on the leather itself without any sort of protection. So I did get the toys for it. I know that there are definitely people who like to dress up their bags a lot and they will change out their toolies, you know, with their different outfits and change up their toolies with the season, and add charms and all that stuff. And I generally don't think I'm that kind of person. So for the most part, I don't really plan on adding you know, changing the toilets out very often or buying more Hermes toilets or kind of like building up that collection to be, you know, really big. I'm really happy with the way that this looks. And for the most part, I kind of feel like I will be keeping these toilets on for the long term. So here is the back of the bag. As you can see, she is beautiful, swift leather, so gorgeous. Absolutely so happy with this purchase. And I did turn a significant age this year. So even though I bought this bag in August and my birthday was in March, I do consider this my gift to myself for my birthday just to kind of commemorate going into a new decade. And I am also just like really proud of myself. I am single. I have a single income. I'm not sharing rent. I'm not sharing bills or utilities with anybody else. I pay for everything on my own. And so for me to be able to purchase a bag like this definitely feels like a very significant accomplishment for me. This bag represents so much to me. Like it's not just a bag. Obviously it's a beautiful Hermes Birkin bag. It also represents just more than that. It represents my independence, my freedom, my ability and drive to do whatever I can put my mind to. So I really wanted to get a Birkin, knew I was going to Singapore, started saving up for it, and I was able to accomplish that. And I don't know, that is just like very, it's just really meaningful to me. And I just feel like this bag is a really great symbolism for entering this new decade into my life this year and also just, just becoming more of myself, if that makes sense. I don't know. Anyway, I know this is getting cheesy. I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent, but um, yeah, this bag just symbolizes more to me than a regular handbag. That pretty much makes up my list for the 2023 best purchases of this year. I only had eight items this year, which I think I usually have about between eight or 10. So I think that that is pretty much on par. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would subscribe to my channel, it would really mean the world to me. Thank you so much for your support this year. I really appreciate it. I think my last video of this year is going to be my most used handbags of the year, which I'm going to wait to film just a little bit later, closer to the end of the year. I know it's a really busy time of the year. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and hang out on my channel with me. I hope you guys all have a wonderful holiday season and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.